I am Hafsa Luck and for the past three years I've been working with the Strategic Reforms Unit at the Punjab Chief Minister's Office in Pakistan on violence against women and women empowerment reforms. The existing case for process to give justice to these victims is so fragmented and disconnected. The victim first has to go to a police station to register a crime. Um, then a medical treatment facility to get like first aid treatment or a medical examination conducted. And medical examination it has to be conducted within 48 hours so that the evidence can actually be used in the court um, um, to prove that the violence has been taking place. Um, as in though they don't have access to these medical facilities and because they don't have, there's no proof that the crime actually took place. Then there's forensics, then the prosecution, then court, so on and so forth. So the victim's will to actually go ahead and prosecute crime de decreases tremendously uh, because of this fragmented case for process. I mean, back in those days, this is summer of 2014, we were hearing reports of how female victims were dousing themselves, uh, were dousing oil, uh, petrol on themselves and then setting themselves on fire in front of police stations just to gain attention uh, from media and other stakeholders to get their voices heard to get their cases registered in the police station in the first place, let alone investigation in the case and getting the perpetrator justice, but just getting a first information report, police report registered. And, and that got us thinking, like, how, what can we do to facilitate the victims as much as possible, to provide them a, to provide them a, a comprehensive justice delivery system? And, and then there was back then that we started having discussions on our commitment violence against women center and what it should look like back in the summer of 2014 this was just an idea on providing all the victims justice delivery services under one roof to streamline the case or process to make sure that they're getting justice and then by providing them justice and increasing the conviction rate uh, creating a deterrence in the society uh, to prevent such crimes in the first place um, and, and since 2004, we've been working on it since 2014, and, and we launched our pilot violence against women center on March 25th, 2017. Um, and, and we've received more than 1,000 victims in these last six months. And we've been providing them all sorts of services, and we've actually successfully resolved eight, more than 800 of these cases. That just shows the need for such centers and reforms to be in, in a conservative society or in a society or like Pakistan or in regions like Pakistan where there is high prevalent prevalence of gender-based violence crimes and there needs to be and there is a pertinent need to have a comprehensive strategic solution to address those issues. Um, while we were in consultation deliberations on how to make the reform comprehensive, we also decided to give these centers a, a legislative cover. And, and that's when we started drafting uh, the Punjab Protection of Women Against Violence Act 2016. Now, this act um, is the first of its kind in, in Pakistan because it provides civil remedies to the victims. And it's not just provision of civil remedies, which I'll talk about in a bit, but also having an implementation mechanism uh, to make sure that these remedies are enforced. So when we were researching, and, and, you, and, and you would have seen this um, time and time and again in the news as well, that the Pakistan government or various provincial governments are coming up with various, in, various reforms to address violence against women, um, to have women empowerment reforms, and you have these empowerment initiatives coming from civil society as well. But the issue is that all of these reforms are relying on the existing structure um, to get them implemented. Uh, the existing system which we've seen that is that it is not delivering justice and it is not providing justice to the victims. Um, to have innovative reforms implemented properly, you need to have a completely different system which is in line with the vision with which the reform was uh, thought of. Um, and also, so for every innovative reform, you need to have a specific mindset to implement them. And, and to implement um, this legislation and to implement these centers, we needed to have a, a completely new system which was staffed with human resource individuals who were sensitized towards this issue and who wanted to bring a change. Um, and, and we personally interviewed more than 600 candidates 
um, and, and our sole criteria was not only the expertise that were involved in the respective fields, but also how sensitized they were towards the issue. Even if the victim was was sexually assaulted by her boyfriend, she by her husband or by her boyfriend, she she is a victim here and, and needs to be dealt with properly and professionally in like a sensitized manner. Um, so that was our first first and foremost criteria: how sensitized they were towards the issue. So coming uh, coming back and talking about the implementation mechanism again. So we've seen that all these existing structures have failed to provide justice because their mindset is not aligned with the vision um, or with the pro progressive vision to make sure that the, the new innovative reforms are implemented and victims are provided uh, justice. So then, then the here, that's where WAC comes in the picture. It's, it's the most comprehensive system that's been uh, designed and implemented. In fact, it's South Asia's first of its kind center um, that's been designed and implemented, and its sole task is to provide, to streamline the whole case process, to provide justice to victims, uh, survivors of gender-based violence, but also uh, provide them with post-trauma rehabilitation and then assimilate them into society and, and basically make them independent. Mm -hmm.